Good morning, this is Bill from The Upside of Downsizing. Uh, just doing a follow-up video, the continuation of the solar shed straw bale walls. Today I'm building the top plate, which really, if you look behind me, turns out to be more of a top beam. Uh, I needed to make up the difference between the height of the side wall, which is tra traditional stick framed, and the height of the bales. So what I have here is a true 2x4 rough sawn lumber that uh, I cut into four equal pieces, and as you can see, I made small spacers and created a box beam out of it. Uh, that, that now will sit on top of the straw bale wall and will be strapped down using the strapping material that I showed in a previous video. Okay, so with the help of Yvonne and Pam from Midlife Prices, we just lifted up the box beam and placed it on top of the uh, straw bale wall. And if you look at the way it intersects with the traditional wood framing, that's how we're going to be able to secure that wall to the beam, tying them together. So it's the width of the bale. And this is starting to give us our uh, the stiffness, if you will, of the wall. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to make the same type of beam to sit on top of this adjacent wall here. And then when we're done, we'll use these strapping material and we're gonna come up, over, around, and we're gonna strap it together, compressing the wall like this, giving it more rigidity. Okay, so I've got the top plates built and installed and I've dropped the level on it and I was pleasantly surprised that it's uh, pretty darn close to perfectly level. So next step is going to be putting the strapping in. So what I did was I untied the first one, got this first strap buckled up, and what I'm going to do I think is go along, get them all just preliminar preliminarily hand tight, and then I'm going to see if I can tighten them down, uh, sort of like putting on lug nuts sort of uh, just a little bit at a time and trying to do it evenly instead of pulling one as tight as I can and then moving on to the next. Okay, so we're in the process of tightening the walls, tightening the straps down. And here's what one of the things we learned right away. As this gets under extreme tension, this buckle may slip down. This bottom portion here could possibly bend down, releasing the strap. It happened to us once. So what I'm doing is I'm tightening it, and as I'm tightening it, I'm going in with my channel locks and squeezing the, the uh, buckle in this fashion to make sure that this is always peeking out from the loop on both sides. That's allowing us to get some really good tension on it. I mean, we're getting this really kind of as tight as a drum. I have some of these over here. Let me show you one over here, for example. I mean, it's really tight. What it's done, what it's done is it's actually compressed this, the bales have compressed to the point to about an inch and a half. When I started this surface, this, this, this edge right here was, was right up to the top of the uh, sill plate and it's compressed an inch and a half. So there is quite a bit of tension on it. The other thing that we learned is, is that we want to alternate. We want to have some buckles inside, some buckles outside, and that way the, uh, the, this box beam up top here doesn't, doesn't shift one way or another. It's being tension pulled, even, even tension pulled to the inside and to the outside. But it's, uh, it's working rather well. So we're going to just continue. And again, it's just using this ratchet. Just got to take your time and make sure that when you're, sorry about that. Make sure that when you're using this ratchet tool, that these, that the webbing stays nice and even like this so that when you ratchet it, it doesn't want to slip to the outside. You want it to stay in that gear nice and even, just like this. And once it starts tightening down, then you won't have to worry about it as much. So just take your time, keep going slowly, and keep an eye on that buckle and make sure that buckle, again, that that portion doesn't start to slip down 
as soon as it hits an angle about like that, that webbing is going to want to slip off. Okay, that wraps it for today. We got all the strapping done. Uh, the top plates or the box beams that are on the top, we got those completed as well. Everything's strapped down and it's good and tight. It really, some of them twang like a banjo string. So, and again, it did compress the bales a good inch and a half, but uh, from everything I've heard and read, that's just about what it's supposed to do. So it also, of course, greatly added to the, the uh, stability of the wall, which is uh, to be understood. So tomorrow I'm gonna take a trip into town, the big city, and get some uh, two by eights for our rafters. And then what we have to do is tie together these tie together these box beam top plates to the studs on the conventional framed wall anyways thanks for watching this is bill from the upside of downsizing if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and we'll see you in the next video